was once the Tampa Bay Hotel. It opened in 1891 and it was built by Henry Bradley Plant, who was a railroad magnate who started buying up defunct railroads throughout the South, um, standardizing the track size. He had a vision of the country where you could travel from the North to the South on one train, trying to make it as easy as possible to get from one place to another. He built up his railroad empire. He wanted some hotels to go along with it. This is the most famous of Henry Plant's hotels. It's the only one that's still standing. The hotel had 511 rooms. It was completely electrified. It was fireproof. And the grounds were really incredible too. There was uh, the Tampa Bay Casino, which was our first performing arts center in, in the city of Tampa. There was a racetrack, there was baseball fields, um, there were tennis courts, and the trains actually came right up to the building. So this building was, was really sort of a technological marvel. Each room had its own telephone, which was fantastic for the, for the late 1800s. My name is Lindsay Huben, and my job title is Museum Relations Coordinator. My job has three main components. I do all of the marketing for the museum, all of the PR for the museum, and I run the volunteer program as well. The museum offers a lot of different programs and a lot of different activities. Um, any day, anytime somebody comes in, everyone gets an audio wand included with their admission and our audio wands are programmable in English or Spanish. We also have uh, brochures that are available all the time. Everybody who comes in can watch our introductory video. It's called Florida's First Magic Kingdom and it is um, an award-winning video. It's about the history of the building, who Henry Plant was, why this building is here. We also have a lot of great programs at the museum, everything from our Sunday theater series called Upstairs Downstairs, where we have eight different characters who bring the history of the hotel to life to our picnic in the park, which is a Victorian field day right outside in Plant Park. We do a Victorian Christmas stroll every year where we're open 10 hours a day for 23 days in a row. The entire museum's decked out. We have 100 Christmas trees, 40,000 lights, carolers every evening. It's really a, a wonderful experience. The hotel opened in 1891 and it ran as a hotel until 1932. Uh, Henry Plant died in 1899, so he was only alive for a few years of the hotel's operation. But in 1898, the, um, Henry Plant sent one of his lieutenants to Washington, D.C. to lobby for Tampa to become the point of embarkation for all U.S. troops going to the Spanish-American War. Uh, they were successful in doing that, so before you knew it, 20,000 troops were on their way here to Tampa, and many of the officers actually stayed here at the hotel. Uh, one of those officers was Teddy Roosevelt, who was here with the Rough Riders, so that's why this hotel, this building, is now on the National Register of Historic Places. Well, as I said, Henry Plant died in 1899. Um, his heirs, his wife and his son, decided that they didn't really want to keep running a hotel. So in 1905, they sold it to the city of Tampa. They sold the whole building. Uh, and they sold the building for a whopping $125,000. Um, I should tell you that the building cost $3 million to build and furnish in 1891. So that was a, quite a chunk of change to lose when you sell it for $125,000 just a few years later. The city of Tampa continued to run the building as a hotel until 1932, and that's the year that the hotel closed. So the museum opened in 1933. Uh, it opened as the Tampa Municipal Museum, so we're actually the oldest museum in Tampa. We've been here, I guess, a little over 80 years at this point. We have a wonderful collection of artifacts, objects, artwork that were all on display throughout the Tampa Bay Hotel. So what makes this museum really unique is that everything that you see around you has been in this building for the past 125 years. Not very many museums can say that. We have furniture, we have clothing, we have paintings, just some really amazing pieces. We have a wonderful collection staff. We have a curator of collections and we also have a collections caretaker and their job is to make sure that everything um, stays in its place and is well secured as well as restoring pieces. We do have some professional um, conservators that we work with who come and they'll take pieces out of the museum and restore them to their original glory and uh, return them to us. We have a lot of historical photos and images in our archives, so that's how we know, okay, well this table used to have a, used to have a bronze finish or this door used to hang on this side and not on the other side. So those, those historic photos are really our guide when we're restoring the collection. My favorite part about the job is getting to tell people about the museum. Um, 
I don't know if you can tell from my face, but I get pretty excited about this place. And I love getting to share that with people. And um, so many people have this idea, this impression that history is boring, dusty old books. And that's really not the case. When you come to a museum like this, you see that history is alive and vibrant and it's relevant to everything we do today. We have, um, the spring is really our busier field trip time. We'll have three or four field trips a week and all of our field trips are led by volunteer docent. We can have up to 80 kids at a time touring. They get a 90 minute tour that includes the museum and the rest of the first floor of Plant Hall so that they can see the, the three ballrooms and the historic photos lining the hallway down in Plant Hall. We also do um, group uh, adult groups, group tours. So we have visitors, we had members of the Dallas Garden Club from Dallas, Texas that came all the way here to see the museum uh, in January of this year. So we have, we have a lot of visitors who come in groups. We hope lots of people will come visit the museum. We do have very active social media, so follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We have a museum website, it's plantmuseum.com, so I hope you'll visit it and come see the museum. We also are always looking for volunteers, so if you're looking to get involved with the museum, we'd love to have you join our team.